Let's take a look now at uh, some of the basics of structures and how to use them in a, in a program. And we'll talk first a little bit about just what a structure is and, and how it's kind of put together, how you, how you create a structure, and then how you get to the things that are inside the structure. An array, it was pretty easy because when we made up the array, uh, they were all the same things, all characters, integers, floats, all of the same type of variable, whatever that type happened to be. And you know what? We're going to be able to use structs in an array as well, structures in an array, because the array is just an assembly of the same type. And a structure is just a way of making a new type. That's really what we're doing when we're defining a structure, when we're laying it out and declaring it, is we're creating a new type in the language. And then we can make as many of those new type variables as are necessary in our, in our program. If you're used to other programming languages, structs are sometimes called records. And in a database, they're also called records. If you think of a, a row out of a database, that would very easily define a structure. And that would fit right into a struct. And, and when you're dealing with databases, and, and we'll deal with a, a file database later on, you'll see that a record out of the database will go into a structure because we understand what the record looks like, so we can create a structure, and that gives us a place to store all of those various kinds of data that come out of a, out of a uh, database record. Because, you know, a record doesn't consist of all the same things. All characters are all integers, and not usually anyway. It'll have a bunch of different data types in it. So a structure fits great to hold a, a database record. A structured declaration has a struct tag and members. The tag is optional, but if you leave the tag off, then you can't do anything else with that structure definition uh, other than what you have right there at the beginning. We're going to see that here in just a second, make that a little more clear. As I said, the declaration of a struct is really making a new type of variable that we can then define uh, where, wherever we need to. The definition, when we create the new type, uses the struct's tag to understand what kind of uh, thing, this type that we want to create, uh, it then makes up uh, appropriate variables and reserves storage for the new type. Now here's a, a simple little structure declaration and then a new variable definition, two, two different animals here. At the top, struct apt, this is an apartment that we're laying out here, that's the tag. apt is the struct tag and that is optional, we could leave that off. But if we did, in the format that we're using it, it wouldn't make any sense. It would be kind of worthless because we would make up a new type and then have no way of getting hold of it. And it would just kind of go away. So we're going to make a new apartment structure. And in here it will have an integer uh, master bedroom. It will have an integer bedroom, an integer den, and of course a float bath. I always like that myself. And then uh, the master bath, I always like to make it a little larger. It'll be a double, which is just a big float. Works out, huh? So here we have our apartment structure. Now look at this semicolon right here. That means that there have been no variables immediately made of this type of structure. If we had words in there like this my place, we would be creating or defining a new variable immediately after creating the template declaring the structure. In this case, we are not. We, this is just a structure declaration, so we have to have the name here the tag, because we're going to use the tag in the next line. Struct apt, it says that we want to create a new structure. Our variable name is my place. Now my place will be large enough to contain three integers, a float, and a double. All of those things will be end-to-end, -end, just like this in memory, one right after the other, and they will be in the format of apt, because we use this tag when we defined our new variable. So we have uh, created a variable called myPlace and reserve storage. Let's go look at this in some uh, real code. 